November was the month the United States dumped Donald Trump. Now, it's fair to say we at Navarra Media hadn't always been too complimentary about now President-elect Joe Biden. However, after Trump's disastrous handling of the coronavirus pandemic, none of Biden's often unconvincing public outings were enough to stop him commanding a majority large enough to overcome America's crooked electoral system. That victory was in large part down to suburban voters abandoning the president. But Biden also relied on the energy of America's diverse working class big cities, something possible because he refrained from attacking the left. Take note, Keir Starmer. After the results were announced a few days after the election, we spoke to Nalini Stamp, organiser with the Working Families Party. She was speaking to us from Philadelphia, one of the cities which helped push Biden to victory. The mood on the ground is pretty great. Um, I mean, I think that a lot of people are just trying to figure out what happens next. But the mood was joyous in a time of deep pain. I mean, Philadelphia was in the middle of an uprising here um, when Walter Wallace was shot and killed actually around the corner from the Working Families Party office um, two weeks ago, uh, the week before the election. And um, there was so much talk of right wing intimidation at polling places, white supremacists and um, through all of it, we actually use joy as an, a radical act um, because so many people were like, well, the left is going to do this and they're going to burn stuff down and this is going to happen and we're the right wing and we're going to intimidate. And it, what was really beautiful is how Philadelphia came together. I mean, we organized Joy to the Polls concerts outside of polling places across the country because we have rampant voter suppression. And we had one video that got has about almost 20 million views now of a voter dancing with us going into line. When we found out that there was a concentrated effort of right wing folks going to um, the convention center um, earlier this week, we threw a big block party. Um, and it was actually a radical act because so many people have been inside of their homes. We are in our second wave of COVID cases that already hit Philadelphia and the Northeast pretty hard. And so people just had a street party and we did it and we drowned out former attorney general of the state of Florida with Beyonce <laughs> um, when she was trying to make a case to steal the election. So it feels pretty good that um, being here in Philadelphia, that Philadelphia set the tone for the world and that Pennsylvania ended up winning, winning it for, for Joe Biden. That's interesting, actually, the fact that it does seem like um, cities in Pennsylvania, what you're seeing is parties in the street, because there was a lot of concern that what you'd see is riots in the street. If, if Trump lost, people were, were scared that there would be, you know, violence between his right wing supporters and left wing supporters of Biden or just, I suppose, more likely just anti-Trump activists. But it, it doesn't actually seem like there has been that much tension. Where are the where are all the Trump supporters? Because presumably there are a lot of people who feel very put out and they're sort of buying into the Trump line that this election is being stolen. But are they, vi are they visible on the streets of, of Philadelphia? Definitely there has been folks who have been out. I mean, while we were at the convention center, um, two people were arrested um, with AR-15s and um, taken out of their cars um, because they were potentially planning something. There was a, um, a bomb threat scare. Um, and there were hundreds of Trump protesters, but there were hundreds more of us um, that were just actually trying to say count every vote. They wanted to stop the, the vote counting. Um, they wanted to stop what they called the seal of the election because they are saying that mail-in voting is fraudulent. And they're still saying that to this day. Um, there were people with guns in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And so there are a lot of folks um, sorry, this has been a headquarters, so there'll be people moving around. Um, there have been lots of folks who are trying to carry the white supremacist and far right wing banner. And um, they were just stopped and de-escalated with joy, with people saying, not in my town, not in my city and not today, with playing music and playing like everything from old house hits to to queer anthems, to Latino music and speaking in Spanish and English. And so we saw that instead of our country being intimidated or people and our movement being intimidated, we actually used our culture. Something that is really important, especially to black and brown communities to say, not today. What does this mean for the left and what happens next? Because I know that you as a representative for the Working Families Party, you backed Warren, 
then Bernie, and then ended up, you know, of course, campaigning for Joe Biden against Donald Trump. Um, but, you know, it, as far as I understand, Biden doesn't exactly share your your politics, um, but you've got an election, I presume, now to fight in, in Georgia to try and win the Senate for the Democrats. And then you've got to try and push Joe Biden to the left. So what are, what are going to be your priorities um, in the in the weeks and, and months ahead? You know, and what, what, what should we be looking out for? What are going to be the flashpoints in terms of the left's attempt um, to to make this Biden administration as, as progressive as it can be? You know, the blue wave didn't happen as we wanted it to, meeting down ballot. Um, we are in a fight for um, the Senate right now in Georgia. Both races at the top of the ticket, the Senate are in a runoff on January 5th. Um, early voting starts in a month uh, on December 14th. Um, and so I think that the priorities right now for the left is one is ensuring that any attempts to undermine the democratic process that happened on Tuesday, um, that we push back for that because you know the president has a few steps to be elected and one is the electors vote um, in states across the country on December 14th. Um, so we need to make sure that that's really important. So December 14th will be a very important date for everyone as we begin early voting in Georgia and as our electors meet because of the inadequate and undemocratic process of the electoral college that we still have, the electors meet, there can be some sideways moves done that day to try to submit alternate elector states. State legislators can do that. So we wanna keep an eye on December 14th to make sure that they support the will of the people because the people decided. Um, and then it is going to be on for the first 100 days. The left has been organizing together in this united front that has been unprecedented, that has been led by the movement for black lives, Working Families Party and the and um, United We Dream Action and others to make sure that our issues are at the front and center of the first 100 days. We need to address climate change. We need to make sure that a Green New Deal becomes a reality. We need to make sure that housing is a human right and that we end the commodification of housing in our country because we are going to face a massive eviction crisis, a massive crisis at the end of December. And we need a real, full, and tried and true economic package that actually gives jobs to people, that makes sure that people are not struggling, pay, working paycheck to paycheck no longer in this country because of the needs that the pandemic has, 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 has brought up to the surface. So there's actually, you know, a lot of us have been joking about how, um, you know, some of us have slept for a little bit, but a lot of us have a lot of work to do to make sure that the first 100 days and the, and the mandate is from the left that we want our jobs, that we want a Green New Deal, that we want the Breathe Act and everything that we've been fighting for for the last not just four years, but decades as the left. Mm -hmm.